Welcome to this video tutorial about Trimble Business Center and importing DJI data from the Phantom 4 into Trimble Business Center 5.4. In this video, we want to show you how to process uh, DJI Phantom 4 data without baseline processing, just purely based on the EXIF information of the photos and with ground control points. If you have Phantom 4 RTK data, then I recommend you to run the tutorial we have here. If you hit F1 in TBC and you search for DJI, a tutorial here included in 5.4, showing you the prerequisites that you need to run the DJI Phantom 4 processing and also the steps that you need to do to run successfully. There are also two videos showing one with the T02 file, how to run the process, and another video, how to run it with the internet download of virtual reference stations for your data. In this video, we assume you do not have RTK data, so you do not have the Rhinex data files for your DJI Phantom 4 data, we will just import the pure DJI Phantom 4 data to this project and measure ground control points and with these ground control points perform then the relative and absolute adjustment and create our deliverables all within TBC. So I start creating the project from the scratch and so I create a new project, I will use the blank template. And in my data, I have now here already an existing um, JXL file, including my ground control points. If you don't have it, then you just define your coordinate system for processing your data. In my case here, this is now given. And therefore, we can take a look here at our project. So in our case, this is in the United States, in Minnesota, in Stearns. And when we take a look, we have here our ground control points. And we will now import the DJI Phantom 4 data for this project. You can run the import either selecting photogrammetry in the ribbon and hit the import DJI UAV data, or you can also run it with F12 from the command pane and just here select um, import DGI and then the panel will show you the file selection and we will just select our project here and then you need to be aware that all your images are in this one folder so if you have multiple folders then please have them all in one folder because we will only read all photos from one folder. Then we hit import and then we will see the data will then get imported into TBC. In case you want to see the report file about the import, you can select the project explorer and in the imported files, you just right click and say import report. And then we can see here, this is how we drag and dropped our JXL. And then here is our import of the images. In my case here, I have um, DJI Phantom 4 data with RTK, but I uh, just ignored here the RTK information because <laughs> uh, based now of the 5.4 release, all of my data here is RTK data, but we will now process this data, ignoring here that the data already has very high accurate positions. So we just imported purely the EXIF information of the images, and we will not uh, use the positions now with a high accurate two centimeter position. We will really just leave it with the 10 meter accuracy for standard um, DGI Phantom data and we will all relate to the ground control points in this process. Our process will now include 
three steps. We will first run the relative adjustment, which is full automatic. We can do this here in the adjust photo stations and then just here select the relative adjustment and hit adjust. Well, I can do this already. And after the tie point extraction is done, we will measure uh, at least five ground control points. We will measure uh, all possible ground control points that we have here. And uh, we will measure them. Um, at least we will try to measure them in more than uh, three or four images. Pro uh, the best would be, of course, in all images. Um, if you are lazy, please don't be lazy then at least try to measure it in two strips. Now, if you fly in strips or in lines, then try to measure uh, each ground control point, at least when it exists in two different strips, which gives us then a better stability afterwards for the adjustment. Uh, don't measure just the first two or three images and stop uh, because we need the redundancy and we need the block stability in this part. After we measure all the ground control points, which we will show shortly with the first one, and then we will fast forward, then we can come back here and run the absolute adjustment, which will also include a camera calibration, uh, which is important because each flight needs a camera calibration when we want to reach the highest potential of quality, mainly because the drone camera is not a photogrammetric camera, it is due to temperature, it will always also be shaken in the flight, in the landing. So there are so many influences um, that are um, having an influence on the camera itself. So we strongly recommend to run with each flight, again, the camera calibration, which is performed within the absolute adjustment. And then when the absolute adjustment is done, we can take a short look at the report. We will not go into detail here. And then we can run all our deliverables. So point cloud generation, uh, a raster generation, the autophoto generation, which will round up our video here and hopefully showing you the potential that you can run each DJI Phantom 4 data here in TBC um, when uh, you have in this case here uh, the, the license of 5.4. Okay, so I will just fast forward here till we get to the result and then go to the control point measurement. Okay, here we go. The relative adjustment is done. We apply the adjustment and we can take a look at a report which is not so important for us because we don't have measured the ground control points, but for us important would be to see um, in general, how the image is connected. So we have here number of used images, 33 of 33. And we see this also in the first statistics, which is important. So all images were able to connect to each other. So we didn't lose one of our photos in this relative adjustment. This is fine. This is the important part for me. And we could also go for the other statistics, but this is, I think, the main part. And then we can now go to the absolute adjustment. I will close here the process view. And we can go here to the points. And we have here our ground control points. And we can then here select the first ground control point, which will then here be listed. And then we will start to measure the ground control points, hitting here the plus button. And then it will here show a preposition for this point and then we need to measure it. I'm lucky now because my data that I used here in this uh, demo here is RTK data. Yeah, so I did not use the RTK data, but my uh, position is already good. So this means in your case, it could be that this position is somewhere around five to 10 meters away from this point. Um, you need sketches, of course, you should know where your ground control point has to be found. And therefore, then you could uh, start to search it, then you click here, then there will come a, a small overview here where we can make our final measurement. And as soon as we start to measure our first point, there's a line of sight. And then typically somewhere along this line, your ground control point should be measured in the second image. We see here it moves here 
to the next ground control point. And so I can click here and then measure my position. And then the second measurement also creates a line of sight because at the moment I don't have any redundancy. And I don't see a different line of sights. So let's make a third one. And typically now it should start to give me a little bit more, but I'm still in the same strip. So uh, let's hope that when we switch the strip, or at least we have a little bit more cuts. Exactly. Then we see now here these line of sights and um, the predictions. Yeah. So um, in my case, this photo is blurred and I don't see my ground control point so well. So I can skip it. I can just select here in the list the next one and then it will show the next photo. I can click in here and then measure here the next position. Then because uh, my camera uh, calibration was not performed at the moment, then it assumed that I can still measure it in this photo here, which is not possible. So I go to the next one and here I can again measure the point. And then here we see here the panel. It's not so good to see, but at least I can uh, measure it here and I will now measure it also in the next one here and measure the panel here. And then you can measure, of course, all possible measurements or you can say, I only want to measure at least in two strips, as I mentioned before. I will now fast forward because I will measure all possible measurements for my ground control points because they are my bread and butter for my orientation. And then after we are done with the ground control point measurement, we will go to the next step. Okay, here we go. I measured all possible ground control points. As we can see, ground control point two cannot be measured. It's hidden by a car. And therefore I have now five ground control points that I measured. One, three, four, five, and six. And we will now run the absolute adjustment with these ones. So I hit here adjust and now the tie points that we extracted in the relative are used together with the ground control points. Again, the GNSS accuracy of my points is still set with 10 meters. We will see this in the adjustment report. Um, of course, having good preposition uh, already is helpful. Uh, it was helpful for our tie point extraction also, but um, they will not have now an impact on our um, adjustment in this part. And also what happens now is the camera calibration. So the camera is now also corrected and therefore we can then after a successful adjustment create very accurate deliverables for the point cloud and the autophoto. So I let it just fast forward quickly and then we take a look. Okay, here we go. Adjustment is done. We can apply the adjustment. Then after the adjustment is applied, it will offer us to show, to take a look at the report. And of course we want to do this. So we say yes. And in the report, I will just quickly jump to the lock adjustment settings. And we can see here that the GNSS is here set with 10 meters. Yeah, so we don't use the GNSS here with a high accuracy. Everything is here bound to the ground control points and then the result here is then extracted based on our uh, GCPs. Again, we will not go into detail here, but the data is ready for generating deliverables and therefore we will now continue. We have here a ground resolution of three centimeters with this data and we can go into advanced US and in advanced US we can now generate terrain model, we can generate here point cloud or auto photos and for <clears throat> our purpose I will quickly run here a terrain model 
with auto photo and that we can just take a look at the end here at our deliverables for this data set. So here we go. Our point cloud and auto mosaic is done. We can import the data now into our TBC project. And then we can close here our process view. I, well, let's take a short look here on the import file. It just mentions that here the auto photo was imported and also our terrain point cloud. So let's take a look. Just close here all these stations that I used for measuring the ground control points. And then in our uh, view filter, we can then here switch off our reference images. And then I can also switch off first the point cloud here. And here close this window. And then we see this is now our auto mosaic that we generated and also the point cloud exists. So let's move this back here and take a look here at the 3D view. And in the 3D view, we can then here see the point cloud here on the right. Okay, I hope you uh, liked the video and you enjoyed it. Have fun.